Well, hello there, and welcome to the Creative Healing Podcast. I am your host, Grant Davis. Today, we are talking to, I, don't, I forgot your last name. Raymore. 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 Okay, I was going to say <laughs> Raymore. Nikki Raymore. Hi. Yay, welcome, hi. welcome. Thank you, you can, for having me. Of course, and you can totally leave now that I forgot you. <laughs> Your, no, your I've been called name. Nikki Raymond, Nikki Ramore, Nikki, whatever. Just oh, yeah. They fun. always try and make it sound a little bit more fancy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I actually prefer Ramore. I think that sounds yeah. fancy. You should talk to someone about getting that changed. Yes. How would you spell that, though? R-A-Y-M-O-U-R. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah, you got to add that U. Yes. To like make your, it fancy. Like your, like your English. Yes. 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 Very sophisticated. <laughs> um, Nikki and I, we met here at Take Two Performer Studio. We did. Yes. I, no, we didn't. No, we, we met, met at in Industry Network. And I yes, we met in LA. Um, and we became best friends. We did. Very quickly. Fast friends. Yes, fast, fast friends. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I invited Nikki on today because I really wanted to gain a parent's perspective yes. on working in the industry. Okay. You know, my mom... Uh, she was my champion all throughout middle school and high school, and we did a million back and forth mm-hmm. to and from L.A., and I'm sure that you're on the same journey with, with your son, Alex. Yes. Yes, we are. We are. We're on the same journey. Yeah. <laughs> um, so a couple questions uh, to start with. Um, how, so how does parenting an artist change your viewpoint on, on, on parenting overall? Well, that's a really good question because I think that um, regardless, like Alex is an actor. My daughter, Ellie, she loves horses. So she rides horses. That's her passion. Sure. So um, having artistic, two kids that are artistic like in that and building their passion has actually made me look at their, so for example, Ellie started riding horses. I never, ever imagined that I would be as a single person or without a child. I never was interested mm-hmm. in horses or anything like that. And so her passion created a passion in me for horses. You know, yeah. same thing with Alex with acting. I never, ever dreamed that I would do anything with acting at all. I can't imagine that I'd ever be working at Take Two or working at True Talent Agency. That was never in my scope of thought. Right. And then all of a sudden, Alex wants to act. And then all of a sudden, I'm thrown into that as well, loving what he's doing and saying, and Justine saying to me, Nikki, you know what? You're, I love your personality. You could get work too. And evolving into that. So... Through my children's creativity, I've I've made my own creativity. You know, it's it's been a really fulfilling thing to never expect that. Oh. Having sing, being single, I no, would have never sure. expected that. No, I'm totally sure. Mm-hmm. I, what has been your journey with with Alex in particular, um, and and his and his acting and his career and his achievements? It's been an it's been an interesting journey. I think that. Um, if we, he would have, so this has been, it's been, it'll be six years in December, five or six years. Um, if this journey would have started during COVID, I think we would have a completely different perspective. But having, being a part of the industry, you know, having him start here at, at Take Two and his first um, audition, he, he got, he got a national commercial on his very first mm. audition. Good for here, him, Here, which was amazing. And he's like, I want to act. I really want to do this. And then he started going to Take Two. And he, so he was, he was. A ten. Uh, ten. He was okay. ten. That's right. When I started. Yeah, really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I started at ten. Yeah, and so he's going to be sixteen in November. So yeah, it's been six years. Wow. Um. Yeah, and so having him go through that, and then all of a sudden, not as a parent, not knowing anything about this industry at mm-hmm. all, that was a huge deal too. Like a big deal. We kind of just within a month he went. He auditioned for the Industry Network got into the internet network and then got an agent in LA. I mean, this all happened within months. Wow. So it was a huge, it's been a huge journey. And then back in the day, cause he's, um, he primarily was commercial with his agent. We would ha- get a call and we'd have to go in the car, as you know, and we'd have to be there the next day for him to audition. And we turn around and we drive back home. So it's like, Oh my gosh, like all of that experience. I, I if COVID self tape and all the things now, that's a, totally different ball of wax you know yeah so but having said that two weeks ago he had a call back and we had to do the same thing get in the car because it was in person and do the same thing so but definitely less than what we used to do sure but as a parent I mean it's it's create a bond between the two of us that is that could never be replicated oh yes because you are in a car with your child for seven <laughs> straight hours one way you yeah. know and so it's it's definitely created something between us that that I don't think we would ever have if it wasn't for acting. Yeah, when I 
when we started traveling down to LA and most of like my back and forth in LA auditioning the whole muck was was way before COVID was even a part of the process yeah. like um that was that's a big component as to like why me and my mother are as close as we are now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we have a very clear way of communicating with mm -hmm. each other if anything like we now as both of us being adults we have to readjust to like um to like setting boundaries within that too yes like, yes like now because because we now that we're adults to some extent we can be each other's best friend mm -hmm. but making sure that that's boundaried and safe sure. and like what we're talking about mm -hmm. um creates enough distance without um getting too far from like all the love and beauty that we built together did you a question for you when yeah. you guys um were going through all of the travel and when you were a teenager mm -hmm. the angst years did you get mad at your mom did you fight with her at all or were you just very easy and, and appreciative and and all the things oh appreciative wouldn't be the word <laughs> i'm just starting to develop my ability ability to appreciate at 25 so i, I think that yes there was definitely a teenage angst uh time period for sure mm -hmm. i'm thinking like when i recorded my record we were living in a high rise in in downtown los angeles just living the most luxurious life we could have imagined and through it all like i was pretty heinous yeah like i was i was very unaware of like what i had been given like the work that had to be done to get us there mm -hmm. Um, and so we never fought as much as like we were just um, we I was just a snot. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Know? I think, and, you know, and it goes back and, I, and I've, Alex and I have had this conversation. It's appreciate. I'm like, you really need to appreciate what, you, what you've been given here, because not many people would be doing what, what I do, what your mom did, does. Right. You know, it's like um, and he does and he's pleases and thank yous and he's so kind and everything. But sure, like I think that spending seven hours in the car together and then your hotel room together and so it is a lot and we get on each other's nerves. Yes. yes. <laughs> but but also knowing that there's that bond. But it truly you do. You boy oh boy. Sometimes you just wanna like walk out the door. Yes. <laughs> and I'm sure you do every once sure. in a while just to get some space. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. When you need that, you do need the space. Yeah, I'm trying to there was um there was this one time because my mom she wasn't the mom that left the kids on the side of the road when they were being bad. Back when it was appropriate in the 90s, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then one time she was like, do you want to walk home? And I was like, we're on, we're in traffic on the Los Angeles freeway. What do you mean do I want to walk home? She's like, knock it off. And I was like, that feels like a really clear threat, so I'm going to just shut up, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now it's just give me your phone. Ooh. I'm over it. Just yeah. give me your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, me and my mom actually, that reminds me of uh, the very first time I drove. So, because I was traveling back and forth. How old were you the first time you drove in LA? 15. You were? Yeah, I had my permit. Oh, yeah, I, I haven't let Alex drive in LA yet. Yeah, well, my mom was like, this is the time. She like stops and she's like, let's drive. Because driving in the snow here in Reno during the winter is one thing, and that's sure. a great skill to have, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and now that I'm an Uber driver, it's very good to have. Um, but driving in L.A. during traffic is, like, a vastly different experience. Absolutely. And how well do you know L if L.A.? Pretty like well. Like, the freeways? Yeah, yeah, so well. the So you're on the 5, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To get on the 110? Yes. And there's that really that, tight... It's so tight. It's oh, so tight my in that gosh. curve. And that was... And it was about... So we had gotten on the off, on, off in Burbank, and I was on the 5, and I was like, okay, this is doable. Plus, it was... For some reason, there was construction... And we were there at like midnight. So like it was very strange circumstances. And I wasn't prepared for that that turnoff getting off on the 110. It is tight. And um, we survived. But I remember being like, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> no, like I'll, I'll let you I'll pass. Um, do it. <laughs> yes. Um, so as a parent, how how do you view parenting as a creative outlet I think you spoke to that a little bit but do you feel like there are elements to parenting that that allow you to be more creative than you probably expected when you didn't have children sure oh yeah because I mean dealing with kids you you're doing things that you never thought you would be doing mm -hmm. um whether it be you know something artistic with a project with them or doing any you know whatever making making a meal together doing things and I love um 
the kids bring creativity in me by suggesting things to do like oh, can we do this can we do this you know and that brings more creativity out in, in, yeah. in myself yeah for sure for sure I mean yeah I'm a totally I wouldn't I'm not the same person I was before I had children but at, at all oh I can imagine at all I don't think that that yeah I think that that <laughs> is a major change I also enjoy this conversation because I am that weird 25 year old that's prepared for the children that I'm gonna have in yes. 15 years yes. like doing everything daily to make sure that I'm setting myself up to succeed as a parent yeah so gaining as much insight as possible yeah do you feel like like creativity and adaptability hold oh you have to be you have to adapt they're in the same space absolutely though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah they are for sure for sure and it's funny I actually the way I was before children, I am so much more, and maybe this comes with age or whatever, but I'm mm-hmm. so much more confident. I'm so much more in owning myself. I mean, I, I'm beyond what I was before I had children. Wow. And I don't know if they brought that out of me. and Maybe both. Maybe they brought that out of me. And also just, just maturing and just becoming, you know, comfortable in your own skin and happy with yourself and, and, you know, taking the risks and doing the things. Because, you know, fuck it. Like, wh- why not? Why right. not? Why be safe? Why live a safe life? It's it's just, it's just not. That's not my. That's not what my goal is. And I, so I having children. I'm just my attitude is completely changed, and well, you have to adapt. And yeah, you have to adapt. Mm-hmm. I love what you said about living a dangerous life. Like yeah, going out and taking the opportunity safely dangerous. That's well, what I tell yes. my students. Yes. It's like calculated w- risks. Yes, love that. Oh, mm-hmm. that's going in a lesson somewhere. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. But yes, like we. As performers, especially, like, sometimes we, we like, fall into the confines of what the script is telling us, mm-hmm. um, what we believe the script is telling us, which may not even be what is really there. And I, I have found, like, supporting my students and being safely dangerous has been really fundamental in how they move forward. Mm-hmm. I always hammer home that once we know our boundaries, we are actually more free to explore because we know how far we can go. Yes. How far we can take it, yes. which I think applies to life. Sure. It's like, for me, like, now that I'm sober, I have six months sober, um, and through, like, understanding sobriety, I understand my boundaries with fun mm-hmm. way differently than I did when I was actively drinking. Sure, sure. Um, so it, op- it opened up an ability for me to recognize um, how far I want to take things mm-hmm. consciously. You know, yes. I, I know that I'm making more conscious decisions because I know how far I can take them. Mm-hmm. And I'm having a lot more fun. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Yes. You had told me, you had texted me and said there was this little bit that you wanted to talk about which had to do with um, you just do. Yes. So I, um, I'm not the type of person, and there, and this is, I think everybody has their own, their own way of how they view their life or whatever, mm-hmm. and how they do their life, right? I am a, I don't think I just do kind of person. I'm not a Tony Robbins. I'm not a self help book. I just don't. That's never been something that I, I have been interested in doing. I just sure. feel like I, I already know, I know me. Not to say that I don't, I couldn't. I'm sure I could totally benefit from those things, but I've just never gone there because I, I feel comfortable in my own self. I don't feel like I need it. Um, like I said, having said that, I probably could, you know, learn from that. But I, um, back in the day when we lived in Michigan, I worked for a chiropractor, and he wanted me to um, do a, a team building thing with him. So we walked on fire, we put an arrow to our throats, we did all these things, right? Yeah. And when, you know, sweat lodge, the whole thing. That's dedication and to your wrote, job. It, well, I literally had been working there for two weeks. And he's like, let's do it. Yeah, that's anyway. a, that sounds just like you, Mickey, <laughs> by the way. Like, here you go. I, I got the fire. I got the fire here. Let's walk yeah. on coals. Let's do yeah. the whole thing. So I did. So, in, in, in a, and that's me. I don't think I just do. And there was a lot of people in this that just mm-hmm. could not get out of their head. Mm-hmm. Having said that, Walking on glass, I literally almost cut my feet to shreds because when you walk on glass, you really have to walk with intention. And instead of just doing, I really should have been thinking about where I was stepping, what I was doing, and I didn't do that. Mm. And so that was a learning lesson for me. Like, okay, just do, you know, don't think, just do. But I really do need to be more conscious of, of sometimes what I'm doing learning f- from that walking on glass because that was that mm. was a huge deal to me like wow I can do everything else but that was the big one I really had to struggle with so is it um I don't think I just do yes but I'm always conscious I should the be glass. conscious of the glass yeah 
mm. always conscious of that. I love that. Yeah. That's kind of the reason I bring this up is because it's very, um, very much built into my methodology of how I teach. Mm-hmm. Like I'm a big believer of that. The body knows before the brain does. Mm-hmm. Yes. The body knows before the brain does. The body knows before the brain does. I, I, every week I will be saying that to my students, like recognizing intuition and instinct yes. is how we find our power. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I love what you said about knowing. Like, I'm listening to a book by Glennon Doyle, and I think you'd actually like this as much as you don't like <laughs> self-help books. Like, it's it's a great exploration of femininity and trusting your intuition, trusting mm-hmm. your instinct. You have to build a knowing yourself, and then things just kind of happen. Mm-hmm. That's the reason that you can just do is because you know. Because I already know. Here. Like, if I, had, if I had just done, right, if I had just dude, um, Two months ago, I think I, I would have fall. I would have fallen. Right. Because I wasn't in a place of safety or sanctity. And now that I have this, um, this beautiful, explorative, very new idea of like how I view life, I can more intrinsically trust my body mm-hmm. and trust my intuition that I can just do. Right. When I mean, you have to get rid of that self doubt too. Right. Yeah. That's that what it is. We know. We mm-hmm. ultimately know. Yes, absolutely. I uh, I also have this. I also have this little saying. I guess it's an affirmation that I use. Um, before I choose to go out, I must go up or down. So for me, like I have a I have a spiritual connection to something greater, which is up, mm-hmm. or grounding down grounding. into the gr- the grounding force okay. of myself. And then taking the opportunity to go out, ask different people for different perspectives, but leaning into those two elements, which are inherently one in my belief, going up, going down before going out, like really taking the opportunity and the time to recognize exactly what I'm feeling, what I'm experiencing before maybe going to someone else for their perspective. That's how you build that. For me, that's how I build my intuition, okay. is making sure that I have a recognition of what's right. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. that makes sense. It absolutely makes sense. Right. And I think that's an age thing, too, where, like, in your 20s, you're still discovering... Oh, absolutely. ...what the fuck is going on. Absolutely. <laughs> and so I I am giving myself the opportunity to, to, to discover that before I concretize it. In, in 10 way. years from now, I want you and I to sit down here and have the exact same discussion, and I want to know what journey you're on then. Oh, yeah. Because it's going to be a completely different one. I mean, maybe the same journey, but just your perspective and everything is going to be completely different. I'm so curious in 10 years. Yes, who you're going capsule. to be. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I have my 10 year plan, so there's a lot. That I know. I will, I, yep. there's a, it's going to be a lot different. Yeah. You know, I think my big thing is I write in the sand. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, I know that that's very self helpy, too. But yes. it, like, speaking to this idea of just doing, like, if you're too set in your ways about how the world works, then there's no opportunity for growth. Absolutely. Or intuition. Sure, sure. You know, because the next day you could discover, the next moment you could discover that what I just found out wasn't true mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. Or maybe it becomes true again. Mm-hmm. We have to be fluid with it. You have to be fluid. And also, I think the biggest thing, too, is to listen. And, and actually, when I say listen to other people, I mean, like, take in their perspective because that's another part of of being just not being flexible and you're set in your ways and you're not willing to listen to other people Mm -hmm. and to and to understand their ideas and where they're coming from and 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 take some of that too because everybody comes from different perspectives and I love getting other people's perspectives of things and I and I enjoy listening and I enjoy adapting some of the things that they believe in into what I believe in if it works yeah I mean, truth is everywhere. I was always taught that. Yes. Which, growing up in a religious environment, wasn't always, isn't always, like, the circumstance. Sure. Like, the fact that I grew up in a religious environment and was taught that there, and was taught that there's truth everywhere was, was pretty rad. So, I, I also believe in, like, the dismantling of the things that are pre-existing so that you can be open, Mm -hmm. right? So, I just talked about religiosity and how it affected me growing up. I was kind of as a gay man, like it made it more of a complex relationship. Mm -hmm. And what I found is like, once I took the opportunity to dismantle my beliefs around and resentments around the church 
it allowed me to have an opportunity to see where truth lied in that Mm -hmm. and other religions as well and then I was more I don't have to I don't have to be a part of it I don't have to participate but I can take the teachings and make and see what's applicable for me yes absolutely absolutely makes sense always looking for truth yes yes Um, how do you I I'm very curious because me and my mom have this conversation a lot um, especially now that she's kind of taken a back seat when it comes to my career Mm -hmm. how do you take care of your mental health um, as well as navigate your creative passions while balancing parenthood I think more of that more of that question is the component around like mental health and your children's creative passions so what I I always make sure I am yes I am mom or they call me madre or mommy actually sometimes still too which I love um I am that but I'm also Nikki Raymore and so I Mm. always make sure that I don't my whole entire life does not revolve around my children great so that is where I do go out with my friends I go do whatever I want to do like I go get a massage I I sell I make sure that I am good within myself aside from being a parent and a wife frankly right you know you have to have you have to own yourself mm-hmm. so that's that's where I, that's my mental health I mean that is taking care of myself aside from my family do you feel like take two is a component of that oh sure sure anything I do that's not involved with my family <laughs> is a component of it for yes real. yes for real anything that's, I do my life is turning into that <laughs> yeah. too so I get yeah. it yeah and I and I love it I take I mean I draw I get great energy and that that's another thing working here gives me such wonderful energy I love the students and I um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I just absolutely enjoy being here and going anywhere. Even when I go to, go to the fucking grocery store. Yeah. Like, I enjoy going to the grocery store. Like, I make sure whatever I'm doing is a moment to enjoy. Oh, I love that. You know, it's like, God, like, I just got the best orange at Whole Foods today. I was super excited about it. You know, it's just little moments of anything to make, just to appreciate and love, mm. you know? Well, that's what I was just going to say. It's like, I think you are doing what I actively teach, which is living in the love of the moment. Yeah. My belief. We talked about this. Yes, how yes. I define love. Yes. And it sounds like you live by I define love by more or less this idea of accepting the moment, whatever the moment is, and trying to find the love in it, mm-hmm. even in the bad moments, even in the scary moments. Like, where is the opportunity of acceptance of it? Mm-hmm. And it sounds like that's what you do in your everyday life. So I, I do. I do. That's incredible. Well, it's in. It comes. Well, it comes from also experience, right? So we. We had a rough patch like 10 years ago, my husband and I and the, and the kids. And, um, and I, a year later, I looked back and I was like, why did this happen? Mm. I, could, I could have sat in a corner and cried about it, or I could have said, this is a learning experience. What am I learning from this? And I'm never going to do that again. You know, it's like yes. you take all these things and you learn from them. And, the, and people, my friends back at the time were like, I don't know how you're doing what you're doing. And I'm like, because I'm not going to be that person. I'm right. going to take this as a learning experience. We're moving on. And that's what we did. Yeah. You know, you have to. You have well, to. Well, and it allows you to create gratitude around the bad moments. Oh, my the, gosh. The Complete moments. and utter appreciation for everything. Yes. I think so. I've, I've talked about this a bit. My first podcast kind of highlighted this. Like, eight weeks ago, I tried to end my life. I texted my family, and I said, I don't want to do it anymore. Luckily, the cops found me. Here I am. Great. But I'm so grateful. I'm like so grateful that I ultimately made that choice because here, here, here I am, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I have been, the, the, my most recent aha is that the choice we made is the right choice because it's the one that was made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm so glad that you didn't do that either. I am too. Yeah. Oh. It's, um, trying your best to create something magical out of the moments of misery mm-hmm. is like the, is a, it's a huge act of love to yourself and I know that still I mean eight weeks ago it's so raw do you feel like you've lear- have you thought about what you've learned from that moment or yeah um, I've thought about it a lot I was in the hospital for seven days. Oh my God, Grant! And uh, it uh, in those seven days, like I was in pure misery. It was hell. Like being in the mental hospital was hell. There's nothing. There's nothing quite like it. Um, it, it at least for me, like in my journey. And 
I I don't ever want to be in that position again. I recognize if that position were to come in my life again, that that is what was meant to be. But through my experiences, I recognize that I, and I live in a, I'm in a really good place in my life, so it's very easy for me to say this. Like, I am, I can live in gratitude for each moment that I've, that I have. Mm -hmm. Yes. This very idea of living in the love of the moment. Like, all that I, who, okay, all that I have discovered in the last eight weeks and all of the life that I live, I don't know if this is going to make sense. So when I wanted to end my life, I wanted to end it because all of these moments were so miserable. Mm -hmm. And today I can, I could die, not of my own hand, but I could die because the moments have been so full. And that's the kind of life that I want to live is like that the next second can come and I could be okay with it ending because because you're fulfilled and happy because I'm fulfilled and happy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and so like having learned that lesson through my pain, through my, my struggle, I feel an obligation to pass that along to my students to know like you may be in pain right now, but this is the most beautiful opportunity you have up on this stage, um, up in front of this camera to explore how the moment is offering itself unto you mm -hmm. and therefore love is offering itself unto you. And it's, it's hard for a lot of people to, to learn that. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. I, yeah. Cause I think we're so focused on results and expectations mm -hmm. and what we're currently going through, not mm -hmm. taking the opportunity to make the next choice into what can be greater. Mm hmm. But to be fair, like, I was in a depressed state when all of this happened. Sure. So there was no way I could make the next no. right choice for me. Right. The next self-serving choice for me. Mm -hmm. um, and now I, now that I'm not, now that I am not, I can't be clinically <laughs> um, diagnosed as depressed, um, I am able to make the next right choice for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And I love your path. I love it. Oh, I have no, I have no doubt of the world that I am ready to create for myself. Because mm -hmm. I'm accepting of whatever it come may come my way. That's right. That's yeah. right. And that's how you do it. Yes. How would you define creativity? Oh God, don't ask me this question. I don't know. Help me out <laughs> here. Come on. I don't. I don't have an answer. I think creativity is. I don't have an answer to that. I don't know how I define creativity. I think it's it's do, creativity is is whatever you make it. If you decide to, you know, drive a ride a bike really well, that could be super creative <laughs> yes, for you. Yes. If you, um, you know, if you can, you know, eat with a I mean, chopsticks, that could be super creative for you. I don't. I think creativity is is very subjective. Yes. It's about it's about the person and what they what they. Think find their passion or what they find to be creative. I don't think it's like a cookie cutter, black and white answer. Right. I, I, I completely agree. I don't think that creatives have to be limited. The word creative does not have to be limited to a certain box. No. It does not mean artistry. And artistry doesn't mean artistry. Who says that the person who who, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example, uh, the person who drives a, a, a truck, a semi, who says that that's not a creative endeavor? Exactly, exactly. My, I think the definition that I'm starting to find is like, creativity is the exploration of your truest instincts, intuition, and self exp uh, displayed for others and mirrored back to you. Oh, I love that. I love that. Because, like, uh, my creativity, I recognize, is a gift given and a gift received. Mm -hmm. I love that. I guess, I, like I've, t I've told you, this is hard for me to answer the question mm -hmm. because I don't, I don't know what my creativity is. However, saying that, I guess what I project and I try to, to give out to the world is, is my positivity and be a good person, be yes. a good human. 
you know, love each other, accept each other for whatever you are. And that's what I like to, I guess maybe that's my creativity. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, that's fabulous. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. When I first met you, that was my instinct about you is like the way you interact with people is, 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 is your passion, right? Mm -hmm. like oh, I, I love, sent you the yes. list of questions and you're like, I don't know what it is. I don't know my <laughs> passion. I think like your passion is making people happy. And I think you do it instinctually through the way that you do. And therefore, it can be creative. Sure. Yes. Right? Yes. And I don't do it. I, and, and I'm saying this to you. And I'm saying this because this is not something I've ever thought of. It's not like I intentionally do that. It's just it's just what I do. Who you are. It's just yeah. what I do. Yeah. You know? No, I totally get that. Yeah. I think that that's the place that everyone wants to get to in their life is where you walk through life just doing what you do. And there's no work to be done. It is enough. Right, right. And yeah. then it just becomes, it's muscle memory, more or less, mm -hmm. too. Like, you're just, it's just built into your system at some point. It's kind of like the 21-day thing where, you know, it really takes 21 days if people are depressed and sad, not clinically, but, like, right. down in a, in a certain way. You really have to force yourself to get out of that. It takes 21 days. That's what they say. Hmm. 21 days, 21 days. You know, that three-week, for some reason, it just, if you keep, you know, positive thoughts or positive things, you're supposedly you get out of that depressive state because you're hmm. changing your mindset. You're changing the way you are. And it's very difficult, but people, you can do it. You can do it. Do you, you want know? to hear what changed for me? Yes. So I moved from LA mm -hmm. to here one day, one day, one day. I'm not kidding. But you said that you've always, this is your sanctuary. So maybe yeah. you already thought in the back of your head, this is it. I, I, I know, I know I'm meant to be here. Like, yeah, there were definitely some things that kind of called me here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So to speak, like I, after I, and I knew mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this last year, I that, knew. That's, that's when you met me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Right. We're putting the pieces together. <laughs> she got me. Yes. No, like after I, and like, I was like, Maybe here I was like, I got to stick it out in L.A. until my lease ends. And then, like, time went by. About two weeks, three weeks went by. And then I was like, no, I know where I'm supposed to be. This was the first, the first great moment of intuition for Grant. Mm -hmm. People in my life, <clears throat> my mother in particular, were saying, no, you can't. You can't move home. Like, you have to stay in LA. You have, you have these, these obligations. You have this life that you have to live there. And I was like, no. I don't know how it's going to work out. I have a lease. I don't know. And I moved home one day. I was, I pulled in and I said, this is where I'm meant to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was unlike anything. And I could hold on to that. Because I, because I knew, um, that's that's what taking your life back is like yeah it's really incredible and then and then you just when you make that choice <laughs> we're gonna hold hold for saw <laughs> and then when you make that choice everything else falls into place yes without you having to do my roommate texted me and I was like I'm gonna have to pay a couple months rent October 1st it's it's the 19th, it's the 20th of September, October 1st, someone's moving in. Damn. I didn't have to do anything. Like, yeah, I just, just to be. but I was respectful of her. I said, I sure. love you. However I can show up, let me show up. I want to, I want to be here for you. That's the work I needed to do. That's the integrity that I needed to live in. Of course, of course. So well, you don't want to leave anybody high and dry and they're not that kind of person. Right. No. But I had, but, but I believe like, I am not afraid to disappoint another in order to stay true to myself. Yes. I don't like disappointing people. And I had a friend, I had a conversation with my friend Haley about this. She was just like, I was like, I'm really hurt by what happened tonight. And she was like, but I don't want to hurt you. And I was like, did the thing you did make you feel joy? And she was like, yes. And I was like, then it's fine that you hurt me because you didn't know you were going to hurt me. Right. Like, it's fine. I don't want you taking on my shit. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to go do something and it, hurts me i'm not upset with you mm -hmm. unless unless you consciously know uh, well, what you're course, doing is hurting me but we life is too short not to take a step out and i learned that by coming here mm -hmm. wow 
I, it's been it's been so it's been so fulfilling being here and now having the relationship with Take Two Performers that I have. Mm -hmm. What I have gained from being at Take Two Performers is a sense of safety and security and home and creativity and flexibility and joy and community. But like also the 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 wonder of the fact that I started here when I was it's years full old. circle. It yeah. is incredible. Incredible. You were one of the first students and you guys were in this little like We were in studio? a gym. We a should gym? all I think that one day we all need to take a trip. Oh, we field trip. A, a field trip to that to that gym and show exactly where we were cuz it's it's wild how far the studios come. Yeah. Um, but being a part of that um, both humbly and proudly is I think that it's slowly becoming my purpose. Yes. You know, I can yes. see it. I can see it being a pivotal part of my life. So, yeah, I like how quickly it became about me. That's my favorite. I love when <laughs> when we're like talking about someone else, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going. I'm going to take that over. I'm curious about this. The question is like, who do you idolize in your field? In your field, who do you idolize as a parent? Who do you idolize as um, someone in the industry? Um, it sounds like you've met a bunch of people. And you can't say Justine Ray's because she is a very easy go-to. I mean, you can, well, and we can, can just gossip about Justine. <laughs> yes, I can't. Well, first, first and foremost, out of the industry, my mother is an amazing human being, and she is the person. You know, I'm going to cry because, you know what? Growing up, once again, I didn't appreciate. I did not appreciate, and yeah. now as an adult, and even now that she's getting older in age, yes, it's like. Oh my God, why didn't I tell her more often how much I appreciate her? Why didn't I say those things? I mean, I do it now, but it's right. like, wow, so many missed opportunities to really talk about to my mom and tell her how much I truly love her, appreciate her for everything that she did for my brother and my father and my, and, um, and I, you know, it's like, yeah. she is, she's a badass bitch and she is like one of the funniest, most uplifting, positive mm. spirits. She, my kids laugh so hard because, you know, she's been staying since they were like 12 and 14. She's like, fuck it, Ellie. Like, she's just one of those people. And she's like, my grand, my Nana just said, fuck it. Like, she, you know, it's just, yeah. she's just one of those people. She's, once again, she just does. She doesn't think she mm -hmm. just does. And I, that's where I get, I get my spirit from is from her. It's oh, amazing. And she is by far one of the most wonderful humans on this what planet. What do your kids call her? Nana. Nana? Nana. Mm hmm yeah. Shout yeah. out to Nana. Shout out to Nana. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. I have my, my relationship with my mother is very much, yeah, like as they age, you start to really contextualize like your relationship with them, mm -hmm. like especially when it's physical, like you can really see it happening. Yes. Like you're like, oh, okay, this is the opportunity that I have to live in the love of the moment. Mm-hmm. Because, like, seeing them age, is, it sucks. It's horrible. It's the most, it might be, it's, like, one of the most horrifying things yes. to experience. Even though she still is bad, like, her arms, have you ever seen my mom's arms? No. Sure? She, t she teaches, or after, before COVID, she teaches cardio drumming. She's 72 years old. Shit. She is a badass. Like, I'm not kidding you. I, I was like, my guns are looking pretty good. I sent her a picture of my, of my arm. <laughs> She's like, um, those are guns. And she sent a picture of her arm. She's like twice the size of my arm. She is. Go get it, girl. She is seriously like she's not going anywhere in this world. But still, you do see it. You know, you see the difference in right. them and, and, and all the. And it's just and me not being. She's in Michigan. Me being here. Uh, it's another. Sure. It's another thing, too. But we talk every day on the phone. But still. Yeah. Or text or whatever. But it's hard. So do you want to talk about how awesome Justine yes, is? Yes, I do. I oh. do. She is an incredible human being. She works so hard. Mm -hmm. She is a she is a, the best momager to Easton. She runs True Talent Agency. She runs Take Two Performer Studio. She goes in fifty million different directions, and yet she still manages to put it all together, and it and it looks flawless. How yeah. the hell does she do that? Well, and through it all, she is the most kind. Oh my god! Gracious, lovely, sensitive. Yes. Funny. Oh my god, she's so funny. She's so funny. Just she doesn't she doesn't seem to let any moment pass by without being as full fully invested in it as possible agree 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 which is just so admirable because yes. normally people would get lost in it yeah no and i think that's why she's a, as successful as she is absolutely i agree yeah. i agree she can do it all seriously yeah. i mean 
what's been incredible about my relationship with Justine is because it started when I was 11. And so there was a component. There's always this Well, because we're your mom now. Yes. We're your moms. Yes, you're my, my, you're my moms. They adopted yes. me. Yes. Official announcement. <laughs> Nikki and, and Justine have adopted me. My lesbian mothers. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so there was like a component where she was, she knew me as the twerp. Mm-hmm. You know, she knew me as a little twerp. And to some extent, I still am. That doesn't evolve much. Um, but she wrote me a letter of recommendation when I applied for an acting teacher uh, an acting teacher workshop. And she said something to the effect of, like, Grant has always been talented beyond his years. But as of recently, he has finally let his maturity catch up to him. Oh, I love and that. And beyond. And I was like, oh... That's just like the most important, one of the most important things that anyone has ever said about me. Right. Oh, so yeah. like, and, and knowing that I get to be a part of that evolution, like knowing that I moved into respectability mm-hmm. as opposed to just walking in and she respecting me. Right. Well, she no. gave me the chance mm-hmm. to evolve into that. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's a person who really cares about people. Oh, 100%. She is when you are when you are in her realm in her in her in her um, you know her group. Mm-hmm. She is one hundred percent all about you. Yeah. She is selfless. Like she she is just so wonderful and giving and kind and loving, just like you said. And and when you are a part of her circle, she will give you the shirt off her back, literally. Yeah, literally. And that's what's so beautiful about her. However, she doesn't take shit either. No. She will call you out. I don't care who you are. She will call no. you out on your shit. No. And I love that about her too because she's very honest. Right. She does not sugarcoat. Because you know exactly where you're at with her. Absolutely. But she also won't hold, and to some extent she won't hold it against you oh, either. Oh, no, no, no. Like we move on to the next moment Absolutely. after that moment is done. Yes. She's not afraid to say no, but she's also not like, afraid to say next? later. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to finish. We talked about it a little earlier. I want to finish with how you define love. How does Nikki define love? So I, I am, well, there's, you know, there's different um, love languages that people have talked about or whatever. Yes. I am, I am everything. I need, I am, I need, I need touch. I didn't realize that was an option. Maybe I'm everything. I am everything. I need touch. Mm-hmm. I need affirmation. Yes. I need to, I need people to, sh- to show that mm-hmm. what, you know, if I ask you to do something, that's a lo- another love is service. Is, is service. Mm-hmm. I need, I need all of those things. Are you gifts too? That's the one that I've always struggled Which with. Which one? Gifts. I love gifts, but I don't need them. Mm-hmm. I, and I think it's, um, I don't, maybe, not necessarily like if birthday and stuff like that, I do, I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. It's my birthday. Big yeah. deal. But if somebody all of a sudden just gives me, like Justine gave me flowers a couple weeks ago because she oh. appreciated me, right? Yeah. That to me was beautiful mm-hmm. because it wasn't expected and it was a pr- greatly appreciated. Something like that. I think it's when it's unexpected. Right, I don't you're not care about, unappreciative of it, yeah. but it is. I don't like care it. about gifts, it yeah. if, but it, it's the it's that act of of I appreciate you yes. for me more than anything. Yeah, yeah. So you're everything. You want you want. I'm all, everything. You want all the love. I want all of the love. That's great. Yeah, and yeah. I deserve all the love. Oh yeah. yes. Yeah. And I think that you you amplify that. Like what I have respected about the short time getting to know you in the short time that we have is. Your innate ability to make people feel safe. Oh, you're so kind. That's very sweet of you to say. It's very true. I love that to feel safe. How do yeah. I? How do I? How do you perceive me making people feel safe? I'm curious. I'll write a poem. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> An ode. No, if you I, will. it's. I think it's. It's. It, it can be as simple as your energy, but like your smile instantly makes anyone in the room feel like, oh, I can trust this woman Aww. with all of my finances. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it up. Bring it on. Yes. And I know you would take it on. You'd be like, let me get it done for you. Like you just, you, there's such trust in you and there's such an inherent belief in people that you can just sense in your energy. Oh, it's I incredible. Thank you. I like so appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. That's very sweet. Yeah. Thank you for being on my podcast. Well, of course. Oh, this is so fun. I love you. Yes. So this has been the interview with 
Thank you, Ramor. Ramor. <laughs> Thank you, Ramor. Uh, I am Grant Davis, your host, and this has been the Creative Healing Podcast. Take care.